here, mithqala dharratin khayran. Same word came up. In the previous surah, Allah said, sharrul bariya. And here, what made them sharrul bariya? Mithqala dharratin sharran. Don't underestimate the power of anything. You know, the sahaba were extremely uh, worried about the small deeds because they accumulate without you realizing. Right? Uh, uh, our, our teacher used to give us the uh, a crazy example of the frog. You know the frog experiment? It's a pretty cruel experiment, but it's been done. Uh, you know, there's boiling water, and you throw a frog in it. What happens to the frog? What does it do? Actually, it jumps right out. It doesn't stay in it. jumps right out immediately. just pops out. Then you take a water, put it in cold, put normal temperature water, put the frog in it, it's happy. And you start heating it slowly. You start heating the water slowly until it boils. And when it boils, guess what? The frog dies, it never jumps out. When you gradually end up in a bad situation, you don't even realize. Right? You don't even... Big, big sins, yeah, you'll see them right away. Oh, I'm not touching that. But small things, you know what you're gonna say? Ah, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? And you do it once, twice, three times, 300,000 times, a million times, you won't even know how many times you did it. Because it's not a big deal to you. And you'll be like that frog where the water can, went up slowly. <laughs> right? SubhanAllah. So the, this, the Sahaba were very, very scared of the smallest uh, uh, mistakes. But inshallah, we'll balance that concept next week. Now on the other hand, the believers, they have bad deeds. But then Allah tells us, you do this, some of your deeds are wiped away. You do istighfar, they're wiped away. You're tawbah, you do tawbah, they're wiped away. Right? They're erased, etc., etc. But what we're, we're learning here is, you know how, oh, what we're learning is, this was, these were the points taken off, and then you did this, and you got credit for them. So it's like a ledger with debit and credit, right? Minus and plus. And of course for the believer, he may have a lot of minus, but his pluses can cancel this out. And then the bottom, the, the, the statement on the bottom tells you what the eventual balance is. But the balance is on the bottom, in the, in the statement, what do you see? Only the credit or only the debit? What do you see? You see both. You see the good and you see the bad. The bottom will show us what ended up happening in the end. What deeds did Allah count? Which ones were taken as sincerity? Which one were not? Which one were cancelled out? Which deeds were erased? Etc. Etc. But this, the first step will be, you'll be shown everything. You'll get to see the whole picture. And that's even further fortified in the next ayat whose tafsir will study. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا وَمِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا Right? The, the worth, the, the, the atom's worth, the speck's worth. We'll talk about the word dharra and its linguistic implications, mithqal and its implications. What's wrong with this book? It doesn't leave out anything small or anything book, except it ca captured everything. So it implies that we will see every last detail. So this will make us appreciate the mercy and forgiveness of Allah even more. You know, if Allah forgives something, and you don't even remember you did it wrong. Like when you don't remember you did something wrong, and somebody says, I forgive you for that thing you did. You say, what do I do? I don't, no thanks, I don't need your forgiveness. I didn't do anything to begin with. You understand? But if you know what, if you're first told this was your crime, this is what you had done, and by the way, I'm letting, a, letting this one slide, this one slide, this one slide, this one slide, and this is one little tiny good deed you did, I'm multiplying this one by 700, this one by 7,000, this one by 100,000, etc, etc, etc. Now you will appreciate Allah's forgiveness, and you will appreciate Allah's mercy. Then you, on, on, on our bad deeds, we need Allah's forgiveness. And all our good deeds, we need Allah's mercy. You know, our bad deeds should be forgiven. And our good deeds, they are so pathetic even, that only by Allah's mercy do they actually count for something. Because even our salah is where our mind's all over the place. Our wudu, we make so many mistakes. Our hajj, we're on our cell phone. You know, you know we're, we're, we have shortcomings even in acts of ibadah. So it's Allah's mercy that, makes, that compensates them. Which is why we find Allah's beautiful names, Wallahu ghafoorun. Rahim. It one covers our, our sins, the other covers the compensation of our good deeds. Because you know, our good deeds in and of themselves are worthless. But when Allah multiplies them, when Allah puts barakah in them, Ramadan is, you know, it's, it's Ramadan. But when He multiplies it, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرْ One night. That's His mercy. That's, that's not any of our accomplishment. We could never have done 80, 83 years consecutive of worship. That's not possible for us. A thousand months of worship, that's not possible for us. But He multiplies it, so He gives it mercy, subhanAllah. But at least before you, you get rewarded for it, you will see it. You'll see the complete... Uh, in the study of the nazm and the coherence of the Qur'an, we say that every surah is somehow rhetorically connected to the next surah. Somehow, one surah is always connected to the next. But in, its, in the study of the Qur'an structure, there's another concept too. Certain surahs are paired together, they're special pairs. 
And these pairs are even found in the sunnah. For example, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ You know, Al-Mu'awwadhatayn is the name the Prophet himself gave them, sallallahu alayhi wa Similarly, you find Baqarah and Al-Imran. So the Messenger says, Az-Zahrawayn, the two glittering surahs. So there's the concept of surahs being in pairs also. There's one concept that every surah is tied to the next. And the other concept, the surahs are in pairs. Then there's yet another concept that surahs are in clusters. There's groups of surahs that go together. For example, there's surahs called Al-Musabbihat. They all begin with either Sabbaha Lillahi or Yusabbihu Lillahi. They're Musabbihat. That's a group of surahs. That's a cluster of them. We've, without me sharing this with you officially, we've actually gone through and we're on our fifth cluster of surahs in Juz Amma. Groups of four surahs. There's four, 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 and now the final four. These are the final four of the clusters of surahs actually. And from here we get back into pairs. Here, مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا Same word came up in the previous surah. Allah said, شَرُّ الْبَرِيَّةِ And here, what made them شَرُّ الْبَرِيَّةِ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا Don't underestimate the power of anything. You know the Sahaba were extremely uh, worried about the small deeds because they accumulate without you realizing. Right? Uh, uh, our, our teacher used to give us the uh, a crazy example of the frog. You know the frog experiment? It's a pretty cruel experiment but it's been done. Uh, you know, there's boiling water and you throw a frog in it. What happens to the frog? What does it do? Actually, it jumps right out. It doesn't stay in, it jumps right out immediately, just pops out. Then you take a water, put it in cold, put normal temperature water, put the frog in it, it's happy. And you start heating it slowly. You start heating the water slowly until it boils. And when it boils, guess what? The frog dies, it never jumps out. When you gradually end up in a bad situation, you don't even realize, right? You don't even, big, big sins, yeah, you'll see them right away. Oh, I'm not touching that. But small things, you know what you're gonna say? Ah, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? And you do it once, twice, three times, 300,000 times, a million times, you won't even know how many times you did it. Because it's not a big deal to you. And you'll be like that frog where the water can went up slowly. <laughs> right, subhanAllah. So the, this, the Sahaba were very, very scared of the smallest uh, uh, mistakes. But inshallah, we'll balance that concept next week. When we were in this world, this was the time to do deeds. Then we left. When we came back, it's time to suffer the consequences of our deeds. You come back and it's not the same earth anymore. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُوا الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ The day on the earth, the earth will be changed into something other than the earth. When we go into the grave, this world was something we recognized. When we come out, it's the same earth, but it's not something we recognize. We're brought back. Now this, the previous time was to do deeds. The previous time when we were here to begin with, it was to act. The second time, to witness our acts. Now you can't do anything now. Now you're helpless. You can't even move your hands. The hands are going to be moved for you. You can't even speak. Your tongue will speak against you. While you were here the first time, you were in control. When you come here the second time, Allah says, لِمَنْ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمُ Who has authority today? Allah asked that question. Right? Same earth. But when you go, you come back, it's not the same place anymore. It's completely transformed. You understand? Now when you used when you were at this home, you were living with your family, you were living with your friends, Muslims were living with non-Muslims, Muslims were living with hypocrites, the true believer living in the same house as a as a munafiq, as a weak believer. Everybody was mixed together. It was all one society. But this is when you were here. Now then you leave, you go into your grave on your own. But when you come back, Allah says, Yasturun Nasu Ashtatan. Ashtat comes from the Arabic word shatta. Shatta means to be, you know, if something was one and it broke and it broke into many pieces, this is called shatta in Arabic. In other words, humanity was one. We felt like we were in one neighborhood, one town, one village, one community. But when we come back, what happens? We're all broken up into different categories. We're, we're not one. Ashtatan. Now, why would we be broken? Would be broken up? Why can't we stay the way things were? Why can't he go back to his family? You know Allah says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُوا He used to be happy with his family. Can't go back to his family now. About the kafir. But for the believer, he says, وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُوا He gets to go back to his family. But what is this division, this spreading that Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about? To be dispersed. The opposite of which is Allafa. Allafa is to take things that were apart and bring them together. So when the hearts of the believers come together, he says, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ He brought your hearts together. Implying they were apart and because of iman, all your hearts came together. That's the word ta'lif. The opposite of which, tashtit and shatta. Ashtat and here, the plural. Shatit. 
Now, these, uh, uh, this word in the Qur'an, Allah says, تَحْسُبُهُمْ جَمِيعًا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّى Same word. Similarly, we find, you know, uh, actually this ayah itself, you will think that the kuffar, their hearts are together. You will think they're all united against you, but their hearts are shatta. they're all over the place. They're broken apart, they even hate each other. They don't just hate you, they hate each other too. That's the reality described in the word shatta. Anyhow, Al-Biqa'i rahmahullah comments, أَيْ مُتَفَرِّقِينَ بِحَسْبِ مَرَاتِبِهِمْ فِي الذَّوَاتِ وَالْأَحْوَالِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَكَافِرِينَ وَآمَنَ وَآمِنْ وَخَائِفٍ وَمُطِيعٍ وَعَاصٍ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ This ashtat, this breaking up will be in accordance with everybody's degree and rank of good deeds and evil.